You are listening to the Savage Fincast, episode 120, Face Reveal Party, an interview with Eric Larson. Chicago, a criminal mastermind called Overlord held our city in his terrifying grip. Ordinary cops were losing the battle against Overlord's super freaks and mutants. Then, a miracle happened. When I found him, he had no memory of his past. I helped him find an identity and a life. Now we have a fighting chance. Now we have the dragon. This is the Savage Fincast, the show that is slowly running out of social media platforms. My name is Jim Purcell. I'm Craig Olson. I'm Raven Perez. Welcome again to another episode of the Savage Fincast, the uh, internet and, uh, yes, the internet, that's where we are, the internet's only <laughs> Savage Dragon and Eric Larson-based uh, podcast. We have got a very special episode for you. We are going to be once again listening to the man, the myth, the legend, Eric Larson, in another uh interview extravaganza <laughs> <laughs> so uh a- anything you guys want to talk about before we get into it or just go straight to interview i think uh, i think we should go straight to the interview because i'm super excited we haven't talked to him in about a year so i think i can't i literally can't it. believe it's been that long i could have swore we did one with him previous but we didn't we haven't done an Eric interview since last December. You know, it's amazing. Ten years of the Savage Fincast, and I think we've bothered Eric like maybe twelve times. Well, yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. About once That's... a year, I think a couple <laughs> times we might have been twice a year, but for the most part, about once a year. Oh. Always feels like more. Honestly, <laughs> that guy and he's talk. always willing to come on. It, it, I think it's just you know. It would probably be good to do a couple times a year instead of waiting once. This year is kind of a little different because it just wasn't enough to talk about, I feel like, issue-wise. But uh, he seems like he's always down to join us, and it's always fun to pick his brain. The, the problem is you do it too much, and you run out of things to talk about. But yeah, I think we keep it good at a couple times a year. You only ask about that Spider-Man webbing so many times. <laughs> and the Johnson <laughs> twins. And the Boom Pal Tacos origin. <laughs> See, we're repeating ourselves already. Let's get to the interview. <laughs> Thanks for jumping on, Eric. I feel like uh, it's been almost a year since we talked to you last. I feel like in the world of published comics, we haven't gotten much out of you, but I also feel like there's a lot going on behind the scenes with certain things that we'll talk about, hopefully, maybe. No. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> we'll weasel it out of you <laughs> so um i don't know i guess let's start it, it seems like there's a lot of things to talk about let's start with savage dragon i mean we've gotten since we, la- we last talked to you we got 261 and 262 out and then i also know that you've been working on the uh ultimate collection and i don't it seems like that's been taking out a lot of your time with like the sketchbook section and everything way way too much time Way <laughs> too much time. No, it's just crazy. Well, first, like eight of the issues needed to be recolored, Ooh. something like that. And so I, I, I got all the all those files, and I was like, "Well, this isn't right. <laughs> let, me, let me show you a thing or two." And I start jumping in there and tweaking stuff. <laughs> so, so I was I'm actually really curious about the recoloring process. Um, so you had to do it entirely from scratch or there was something, anything you could salvage or was it just, uh, there, there was the black and white line art, which existed. Right. Um, as we did the Savage Dragon archive books. Part of the problem with using those, however, is that, uh, I swapped in zip for a lot of effects. Right. 
So like when there's a star field, there'd be a zipatone with stars burned through it. And so if you're trying to recreate the way the comics were, that's something of an issue. It's like, that's not exactly the way it was. And then there was the, well, do, are, do we going to match the real first issue or are we going to try to match the way it was recolored when it was in this trade paperback or whatever? Because it was recolored immediately for the first trade paperback because all the pages were shuffled around and put in chronological order in that. And it just seemed like, well, this is going to look really weird if you have these two drastically different coloring styles and it keeps flipping from one to the other. So let's just pick a lane and do that. Um, How many issues are going to be collected in the first volume? Uh, 13, which is what uh, Robert Kirkman's been doing with everything he's done and so it seemed like hey let's emulate that and make it like this is an image thing right. so uh robert so that, wrote the introduction too so it's like all right whatever if that's what you want to do if that's the way you like it let's do that and then i did so many sketchbook things in the back that it ballooned out way bigger than it should have been like, whatever did I say it was like 40 pages of like extra sketchbook material? It's, it's <laughs> way, way crazy. Because they're all double page spreads of sketchbook stuff. And there ended up being like uh, 88 total pages or something. So it's like, it just keeps going on and on and on. You're just like, Jesus, man, enough. And some <laughs> of it, I'm like, I don't know if you guys will think this is interesting or not. Oh, but... <laughs> I'm pretty sure people will find it interesting. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> Anything so it's a, we can get our hands on. Yeah, so it's a lot of stuff that has never been seen by the public yeah, before. Yeah, but, it, but it, a lot of it's like shittier versions and stuff you have seen too. So it's like, <laughs> here's the layouts I did and some of them I didn't use. So there, in, in some cases, there's, there's pages in the back there where I'm like, all right, so I did this layout. I kind of like this one little dude here, but I didn't like the rest of it. So then the next one, there's the same page, and it's got big fucking yellow tape on it because tape has turned yeah. terrible after 30 <laughs> years. <laughs> and then it's like, and then here it is again. With It's like, good God, man, who cares? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and if you have the other... Tr other uh, books I didn't I didn't necessarily was able to find everything that was in those sketchbook sections so there's still going to be stuff where you go well, wait a minute where's this one <laughs> it's in the sketchbook it's like ah oh, sorry I couldn't find it <laughs> so how is how is the format on does this have letters pages or is it straight story no, no um, letters pages and and it and it uh it, it's really like kind of like the other trades that I've done but way 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 fatter mm -hmm. so so it it starts with here's you know here's the credits here's the introduction here's a bullshit spacer page just to take up a page story starts uh and and it just one story barrels into the next there's no breaks for covers it's just bam here's 13 issues one after another it's in the order of the Dragon 99 cent book. So it's all chronological. It just barrels ahead. You get all 13 issues. It ends on issue eight. So Rapture's going, oh, Dragon, you okay? And he's all fucked up. <laughs> and that, that's the end of volume one. Um, and then I think it's... I think it's sketchbooks after that. I'm not sure. You I think you, it's sketchbooks. You, you didn't include any of the like important backups. Oh or, no, I, no, everything's there, man. It's Good. the same. Hey. Then it's sketchbooks. Then it's covers, I think, and then it's the vital backups. Okay. Ooh, so nice. it's. It, I mean, there's always more shit that could have been in there. Like, oh, there's a pinup that Jay Lee did. And it's like, is there room for that? Well. We would have to add 16 pages in order to include that. So it's like, well, it's not. Well, I kind of, I kind of like that. There's something to be left to the actual single issues. Yeah, there's stuff that's in the in the single issues that's that you'd be like, oh, there's pinups that aren't in this book. There's. You're, you're, 
you're not going to have 88 pages of sketches in every volume, so. No, there won't be that. And there won't be, I, I don't think there'll be backups in any subsequent book because I don't know that there are any backups that are that. Yeah. Story vital, you know. Those early ones were a lot more uh, yeah, I mean, it's like this is kind of setting up Mighty Man. This is setting up, you know, where Rapture came from, stuff like that. Um, and those, and and it's like some of those needed to kind of be recreated. And it was, and we were at the point where it's like, well, we don't have time for this. I'm like, I'm just going to scan in my comics and clean it up as best I can. So the backups may look a little funky when you get to eh, the end of the. That's it's fair like, enough. Hey, they're extras. Sure, it's beautiful, but it's like they're as beautiful as they can be. <laughs> Better to have them than not. I mean, for sure. Well, that's what it was. It was like, you know, a bunch of different things like that. That okay, we we're gonna have to scan this in, and then there was other stuff where they were trying to. The colorist was trying to recreate it. It's you know, like oh, this. I'm doing my own Starfield, man. And it's like, no, you're not. <laughs> Taking that out. And going, oh, Here's the one from the actual original art, which I still have, and I can scan in and 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 recreate. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so the coloring is, is in some cases a little a little weird. Somehow or other, we ended up getting files for a different colored version of Savage Dragon number five. So it's colored by Abel Mouton, and there are places in it where it's real close to what was in the comic, but looking through it, it's like, I don't remember there being those weird knockouts. What the hell is this all about? So at some point we had Abel recolor issue five. I was thinking it was for some collection, but it may have just that we needed it for some foreign reprints. So rather than rather than get it recolored yet again and pay for that yet again, it's like I guess we're going with Abel's recolored. So because it's already done and usable. It's done. It's usable. It looks good. And it's a little off from what you've seen in the comics, but tough shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. I mean I mean, the, the challenge of these always was the coloring. So I think we can accept that it needed to be done regardless yeah. of how. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's not going it, to happen. It, it, coloring is such a goddamn nightmare on all fronts because coloring is much more advanced than it was. Oh, and yeah. it's different than it was. Um, the old stuff was colored by Ole Optics. And they were using this um, system called Cod Barrett. And Cod Barrett had these weird limitations where it would stick in this, like some of the gradients, there would be this weird banding and stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, and then you'd look at it and go, God, that's weird that it looks like that. That's kind of cool. And then it's like, well, are we going to try and recreate that banding? Because it does look kind of cool, but we can't really do that so i guess we're not <laughs> and then and then it just the whole color program was so weird if you're looking through the old issues of dragon occasionally you'll come to something where you go that seems like a weird choice to have there be a color jag on something like there like in issue 2 of the ongoing savage dragon book there's a close up on um, dart's face and there's like this weird triangle like across her chin. And it's like, what the fuck did that come from? <laughs> and it, and this Cod Barrett system was such that if you're if you're coloring something one color and then you put another color and for some reason you chose exactly that pixel for for where you're gonna have the corner, but it's the same pixel that was on the other color, it would mess it up. Not let you do it. So you would end up going, I had this color that was supposed to go from here to here. I can't use that pixel, so uh, it's going here. <laughs> and it's like, what the hell is going on there? But there's, there is, there's like, there's some panel in issue one where Dragon's walking away from Frank or something. In, in the background, It's there's just this big diagonal thing that's there. 
And then when these colors are doing it, they're like, I'm recreating that. And I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> so I, I can't put that the way it should have been. So. Oh, I see. You know. Okay. Yeah, see that? They dropped, dropped a pixel there on her, on her chin. That's so, weird as hell. That's where that goes on. When you're prepping these books, are you going through the issues and taking notes on everything that got screwed up that you want to fix for the final? A lot book? of it. A lot of it, yeah. And even in, in uh, stuff where I'm sitting there going, because initially Robert or whoever is like, I don't know, for some, we weren't going to run the covers at one point. And I was like, no, we got to run the covers. And we oh, have yeah. some of the covers that are colored. So yeah. let's, let's run them. And then, and then it was, well... We don't have them all, so we're we gonna get them recolored. We're we gonna scan them in, or what are we gonna do? And so, in some cases, they will be scanned in covers too. But I was like, I'm scanning in the covered issue too. Going, God, it's always bugged me that uh, one of the Ninja Turtles, like the the logo, is looks fucked up. <laughs> their their <laughs> logo, there's like this big red bandana across it that isn't across it because yeah. the logo is on top. And it was like, oh, I can fix that. I can. I got Photoshop. Let me do that. So I'm just yeah, like the color layer has bled through. I can fix this now. This is all <laughs> possible. And I and I just ended up spending way, way, way too much time. And the cases where they simplified stuff, I'm like, oh, I gotta add that three back. I gotta do that, or I can do a better job than that. <laughs> or or even the printed comics, like, oh, let me fix that. So is it is it done at this point? And it's like, do do we hyper obsess on on getting this right, or do you really want that original comic book experience? It's like, well, if you want the original comic book experience, I highly recommend buying the original comics. They exist and they are in plentiful supply. There are yeah. tons and tons of them, especially these ones. Yeah, especially. Yeah, I think I have five or six different versions. Not so much the later ones. (laughs) But if there is a situation where I'm sitting there looking at a page going, that was supposed to be Dragon's hand, not Frank's hand. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that that one, yeah. (laughs) I remember that one. We reviewed that in a retro. (laughs) It's just like, you know, I'm trying to find little things here and there, but, but. It's like, God, it's driving me mad, <laughs> all of it. And it just w- <laughs> took way too many, much time out of my life. And so uh, at this point, is volume one done? In it's off? done. It's off to the printer. I've got no excuse except this that there were certain things that drive me wild <laughs> in terms of sitting there actually trying to draw stuff and get it done. Because there's just stuff that I'm – I mean, the nice thing about doing care- – books set in real time is it characters age they change so it's always like oh the book is kind of a different book now because of this is different and that's different and whatever but there still ends up being these recurring things that you can't help but have to do and some of them at this point are just driving me up the fucking wall (laughs) or i'm just going really i have to draw another funeral god The crazy thing, too, though, is... Goddamn funerals and anything. This is ridiculous. What angle can I use to draw this funeral? Who needs to be there? What do they look like now? Everybody's getting all their crying out loud. <laughs> well, <laughs> when the book was mostly, like, adults, it's not that big a deal. But when you have, like, small kids, six months to a year is a big change for, you know... Yeah. It's, yeah, it's little kids, it's, it's huge. And then it's like, well, I haven't really established what what Barbaric and Ricochet's kids look like or even how many there are and what stage they're in. It's like, holy fuck, I have no idea. You know, <laughs> I mean, Super Patriot, I guess, has some other twins now. Well, when the hell did they, were they born and how old are they? Who knows? Gavin doesn't know? Well, that, well, the... I mean, it's all on the wiki. I can all look, look that shit up. But so, are you? So, was the old? I know you had a, a case of writer's block, but for the most part, has it been just putting the ultimate collection together? That's been kind of it's, pushing that's your time. Been been, uh, that's been a real big pain in the ass. And then it's just little dipshit stuff that's like, hey, you did a cover for me, now do a cover for you. Oh, yeah. All right, I guess I'm doing a. 
I hate Fairyland cover. Off we go. <laughs> Which is fine. You know, it's like I made the commitment to do it back and forth. But it just, there just ends up always being little like, well, here's this little fire that needs to put out. Man, this over here. And then now you've got this going on in your life. God damn it. Can I catch a break? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, a, a, go ahead. Sorry. I'm going to say and something. All, and it's all excuses, but. You know, the, the, the God's honest truth is I just don't want to draw this fucking funeral. <laughs> but it's like totally a catch twenty two though, because you want you want to get that ultimate collection out because the the market the back issue market is insane. There seems like there's all these new readers that want to get back issues and read Dragon, but they're so expensive. And so you know, I think it's a great idea that you're putting these out. And hopefully it can well, foster it some new readers. There's a window that it needs to be out. And it's like, you know, Christmas is coming up. You need to have this thing out in December. Early as in December you possibly can. So let's make that happen. It was supposed to be out, I think, late November. And I think we I think it's just a week later than it was supposed to be. So it'll oh, it cool. should be in stores December seventh. Right around the corner. Nice. Yeah. And then what's what's the plan? Like, are you trying to put one a year out, two a year, or to see how sales go? I think I would, I would like to do a couple a year just because if it's one a year, then it's going to be 30 years behind always. <laughs> just like, that's no good. I mean, how many volumes would it take at this point? Like, well, it was 13 well, issues 15. roughly. So twice, so as, twice as many as archives. Yeah, it would take 20, 20 volumes at wow. least at this point, and that wouldn't be quite caught up. I need to get another bookshelf. <laughs> but, you know, I, will is there enough of an audience to support it all that way? It better be. <laughs> it better goddamn be. Well, yeah. there's some, ch there's some chunks <laughs> in the middle. Have... No, I would like it if it was. There are some issues in the middle there that are a little rough. And it's like, ah. Uh, well, there's some ch there's some chunks in the middle that have never been reprinted, as far as I know. What was that? I said there's some chunks in the middle that have never been reprinted. So presumably, when you get to those, people will yeah. want it because they've never been reprinted. Yeah, there's that too. I'll buy a couple copies. Help it out. Do it. I bought two. Yeah. <laughs> one to read and one to keep. It is crazy though how much the back issue market is is just I mean it's been crazy like I it used to be able to pick up a, a back issue in the two hundreds or whatever for cover price and now some of those prices I'm seeing is like absolutely bonkers and it, I mean I'm hoping that these people that are buying them are actually readers and not just speculators I'm sure it's a little bit of both but um, I am encouraged though seeing you know especially during the pandemic the people that when new issues of comics weren't coming out, people were looking for long-standing comics, I think, to, to delve into and, you know, to, to get a comic that's 250 issues long. I mean, it's a nice, long, you know, yeah, reading. Yeah. It's a chunk, for sure. Uh, and so, if, you're, if you're getting stuff digitally, too, it's like, oh, okay, that's that's huge. But I really want to have it in, in my hands. Like, all yeah. right, we're trying <laughs> Just see how long that'll work. You know, I mean, when I would do, I'd do three a year if we could, if we could make it work. But I don't know that the numbers would be. I don't even know. I hope, hopefully, we don't need to get anything else recolored because that was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> As someone who prefers the uh, singles format, does it uh, bug you that like the later run issues like Malcolm era, like Malcolm Maxine, like the stuff we're in right now. Uh, yeah. Does it bug you that that's like hard as hell to get? Like if you're not buying it, good luck. The scalpers are going <laughs> to jack that well, shit up. I can, all I can do is put the damn book out, you know, that's, does it bug me? I would rather it be available. I would rather stores, uh, bought more copies of it so that that wasn't an issue but mm -hmm. I'm not in control have you ever entertained the idea of maybe uh, 
making POD options available. I don't even know what that is. The print on demand. Like Dave Sim does POD, like print on demand of like Cerebus, just to keep it available. Not saying that's the option. It never is. But that way, if someone wants to see those super expensive, though. I don't even know how that works. I, honestly, I don't know how that works. So uh, that's an answer right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's that's, that's right. my answer. Is I, <laughs> I, I I'm I'm just a caveman. <laughs> it's down to it. It's like there's so much of this stuff. It's like, hey, are you on this? It's like I've never heard of that. <laughs> So no TikTok coming, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> Neither dance nor sing. <laughs> I saw someone recommend that you get a TikTok to replace your Twitter. And I was like, that's like, not that's, a good fit. That's but not the same. That's not, it's not. I don't see yeah, that. that it's that old Sesame Street. One of these things is not like the other. You know? <laughs> yeah. Those, are, those are not those aren't are, equivalent are, things. Aren't <laughs> all TikTok's videos, like, is that the whole platform? Yeah, that's mm. pretty much it. It's sure. like, I'm, I'm not a 13-year-old girl, man. It's not going to work for me. Right. <laughs> Doesn't work. <sighs> so with the uh, Savage Dragon currently, are you? do you still feel like you're in a writer's block, or do you feel like you've gone beyond that and are things moving now, or where do you stand uh, on that? I, I still have some characters to kill off to really... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that really makes us feel like I'm I'm home free. <laughs> uh, Are you getting through 263 at the moment, uh, or I'm getting through it, but it's it's slow going. It's slow going because of the necessary funeral stuff that has to happen. Because it's like, you know, Hardis has been there since early on. She's you got to do something with her. You know, I can't. You can't just be like. I don't want to go. It's like, you know. <laughs> Not just yeah. Hortus, right? And die too. So there's like. Yeah, but that one's a, that one's a weird one because there's nothing but stuff. Everybody blew up. Right. So <laughs> just what, a jar. What are we burying here? Do, are we going to, do we go in and scoop up everybody? <laughs> you know, is there going to be a grave site? You know, and and who's who's in charge? I don't. It's like the girls. What is she? Twelve or something? I don't know how old she is. She's super young. Yeah, she probably's gonna have a new guardian of some kind, or is she? I would I would think that there would be something that goes on there, but we've really not done anything in terms of establishing any extended family for any of those characters. Otherwise, uh, Super Patriots is going to keep throwing her into dangerous situations. Yeah, yeah. he's a good dad. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's a good dude, that guy. <laughs> um, but it's like I've never shown Anne having any family. I've never shown uh What's Phyllis, what's Phyllis up to? <laughs> oh, Phyllis. <laughs> just yeah, gonna... I mean, Phyllis's possibility is just, hey, we had her on our guardian. And then that would be, hey, it's a familiar face. Boy, is she blimped out. That sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> she was so young and cute. Now she's not. It's life. She's 300 pounds. <laughs> you, yeah, the, uh, go go ahead, ahead, Craig. No, you go ahead, Raven. Oh, I was just saying, like, uh, you know, this being the 30th anniversary and, uh, you know, the ultimate edition definitely feels like a celebratory like event like to get that announced in there was fantastic but uh of course being a greedy fan uh, we were hoping and wondering if there was any kind of other plans or anything was there anything you had in mind that sort of just got derailed <laughs> not really my life these these anniversaries they just come too often and yeah. so many other times that i've got to the anniversary point i just totally just shit the bed so it's like my the anniversary issues aren't generally my favorite issues. So <laughs> especially like the 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 twentieth anniversary issue was like, hey, Dragon's back and <laughs> Overlord's been unmasked and now Dragon's being arrested at the end of the issue. And it's like that's kind of a shitty issue. <laughs> that's so good. 
time. We kind of had like a little like a roundabout celebration in a way. Like uh, you got Tim Seeley's story in the 30th anniversary. The Hack Slash meets up with uh, Super Patriot, which was kind of cool to to get some of your characters in that anthology. Because I was bummed when. You know, we didn't get a Larson story in there. It it does seem like it's a lot of like new blood, and they're trying to push like the newer books, yeah, which is yeah. cool. But no, it's, uh, it's like they they had they had asked if I had anything, and I was like, geez, man, I, I just can't do it. I yeah. just can't just be like, oh, here's some more stuff. The the Super Patriot huh. story. I mean, I, I feel like it's it's pretty damn cool. I mean, it sounds I like. <laughs> It, really? So you didn't have any input in the dialogue, or no? I just I saw it and I was like, "What the hell's this?" And it's he must he must have asked my permission, and I just fucking. It's just really fun though. You can tell he's a fan. I mean, he's referencing cyber data, and he's got cyber force references, and you know, at the end, he meets up with uh, the Project Born Again with you know uh, the Blood Strike guys. It feels like a cool little old school image romp. I, I really like it. And he, and he's on model with like, kind of almost like the, um, Dave Johnson, super Patriot. I feel like it, it's just, it's, it's well That's, done. It's, oh it's fun. God. Are they, uh, what, three chapters in now? Did the third one just come out. Yeah. I didn't get the third one yet. I haven't been able to hit the, the comic store, but the first two were fun. And I, I was like, kind of happy that <laughs> even though we didn't get a dragon story in there, at least super Patriot has got a nice little romp. Yeah, all right. Well, he's doing a good job. You didn't read it, but... <laughs> How is that? I'll read it when I read it. And then we got to do our, uh, our Super yeah, Freaks no, that book. Thing yeah. was super awesome. That, that, was, that was serendipitous. Yeah, that, that was that was nice. I mean, I went in and, and did a little bit of lettering tweaking more than anything. It's like, oh, there's some misspelled words, and some of these fonts aren't the clearest, so let me stretch them a little bit and stuff. I don't know. I don't know if people were like comparing them to their original going, Hey, wait a minute. That spelling well, was, was essential. Well, we were the but, quote unquote editors and we didn't notice. So yeah, we didn't notice <laughs> at all. I was like, Oh, perfect. Yeah. I was, uh, I, I really got to thank you for that. I mean, we didn't really get to talk much. We, we texted back and forth when we first had the idea for super freaks. We were like, Hey, you know, we did this podcast for 10 years and we just wanted to do our own little, like, bootleg thing didn't want to like you know just for ourselves not not selling it but but i did want to you know text you and be like hey are you cool with this because i definitely didn't want to do anything yeah, that was awesome. heartburn it was super awesome. um, and it's, the quality varied somewhat but it's like i'm not going to be like yeah well this guy's gotta go it's like fuck that it's like <laughs> we're all in man <laughs> It blew me away when you were like, oh, you know, we'll publish this. I was like, Whoa, what? Like, it, this was just supposed to be like, you know, copies just for us and just the listeners, and, you know, whatever. Just a quick little fun little thing just for the fans. But honestly, when the pages did come in, you know, first of all, I didn't think that anyone like I would get half the amount of pages that I did. I thought everyone would be cool doing it. And then everyone would flake out and nobody flaked out. It was amazing. Like, I was oh, like, yeah, how yeah. is this possible? I flaked out, but I got saved oh, at the yeah. end. And... <laughs> And the quality was was good, and the stories were good. And the the thing that I liked about it was that it's real fans, so it's not just like exactly. a bunch. No, it seems super fanny, which is what I like about it. Yeah, like, really like these guys read and and pretty much understand this book and how it works. That's what the best thing is. You don't always get that. You usually just get a bunch of indie artists that want to take a shot at somebody's and you know book and do their own thing and yeah you know, I don't know how, I don't know how you figured it out but it's nice that that it was a a real kind of all over the universe too it wasn't somebody's like we're all was, other than powerhouse stories it was like <laughs> you no know, one guy's into this and the other guy's into that it was, it, was it was truly it was truly an accident because we didn't actually tell anybody like what to do or what not to do we basically said do whatever and it just turned out that way and we just put a spreadsheet together. We said, you're doing a story about these guys. It wasn't like, hey, you do this, you do this. It just came, and I, I tried to, like, mix them so that, you know, was it was all over. Said, the I want to do this, and you said, no, we, you can't do that. We've already got somebody handling it. Our only rule was you couldn't use something that was already previously published somewhere. So if someone, you know, had a, a pinup or someone had something that they <laughs> used, we said, Everything has to be brand new on this. Yep. Everything's got to be brand new. Yep. That was the only but, real uh, rule we had. 
Uh, well, it was the only rule we had to. Well, we didn't. We didn't even have to enforce it, but it was the only rule. Mm-hmm. So the funny thing is, is that uh, Connor, who did the Good Wife story with Maxine, yeah, that was which, so awesome. It was great. <laughs> so a, good. Kids a prodigy, right? When I saw it, I was like, God oh, damn, Connor, you killed it! Like so good. But what was so funny is that uh, Connor, I had like everybody was expecting me to do something smutty, and I held back on my smutty inclinations. Because I was like, well, some of these guys might want to show their moms or girlfriends this or something. <laughs> so I held back. And then, like, Connor puts this out and, like, Maxine's pegging Malcolm and stuff. And uh, I thought you'd get a kick out of the fact that uh, Connor said he had to explain <laughs> to his mom what was going on. <laughs> like, well, what's happening in this panel, son? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Came back that's, to bite him. That's, yeah, that's, those, are, those are hard moments. I'm just oh, yeah. thankful that none of my family even looks at my book. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blessing. No, it, it's really like I, I forget sometimes, like, oh shit, somebody's reading this. <laughs> oh, <Uh-oh. laughs> that's bad news. <laughs> uh, but it, it really was rewarding for like the longtime fans. I mean, we've made so many friendships before we did this and then just working with these people, like there's a real community of Savage Dragon fans that have, we've been talking for oh, decades now. <laughs> but uh, it, it's fun to get together and, and play around and thank you for that opportunity to, to, to get it published through Image. That I think, you know, for a lot of people, it was super exciting to, to just – you know, have a fan book that that's actually really published through Image Comics. I mean, we got a real thrill doing that. Oh, cool. I was, I was happy to do it. In my family's eyes, it eclipsed my entire 24-year comic career. <laughs> they were not impressed by anything <laughs> I've done. I, I kick-started successfully a book in 2012. That was neat, but they didn't really give a shit. This getting to go into a shop and be like, this is my brother's book. That's that was it. That was the one. Nice. It took a while, but I guess I made it, you know. So. <laughs> there you, go. you had a story in Savage Dragon, though, in the regular. In they, the regular. Cared, they cared about that. And what's funny is that I cared about that because that was an important issue, right? That's the death of Savage Dragon. That's an awesome issue. So I'm in that issue and like, it's hard to get. And so like, I feel awesome about that, (laughs) but they didn't give a shit. They didn't care. (laughs) They were, they, yeah, they were not impressed. They were impressed by this, but they weren't impressed by that. It's weird. Family is weird. Family doesn't know shit. What do they know? (laughs) They're they're not going to hear this. Fuck them. (laughs) <laughs> that backup story is so funny too when you think like how long ago it seems now because it was like oh angel and thunderhead might be an item and then it's like nope <laughs> not her yeah. there is another yeah that, i'm all over the place <laughs> <laughs> i remember when you sent me that uh plot synopsis you're like angel and thunderhead are at a cafe and draw them kind of flirty Kind of having a flirty conversation, and as ever, as a reader, I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> nowhere." It went nowhere. <laughs> it's like, False lead. <laughs> Where's he going with this? That was a perfect time period for you, Raven, too. With like, oh, you can draw her nude. Like that's right up your alley. Like it worked. It worked that, out great. That strip was like perfect for you. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, fun times. <laughs> so, Savage Dragon, I know we got 263. Looks like it features Mako, who we affectionately call Fako because we can't accept him as Mako, even though he's. Oh, yeah, yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> um, needs to do something to really distinguish himself from the original guy if he's to do anything, so. So what, he's, he's killing a lot more, killing and eating a lot more people. Than well, he's a psychopath. Yeah, he's definitely crazy. I mean, that does make him different. He jacked up our boy Roughneck. Oh, Roughneck. 
what what is so what is with you and roughneck eric i mean the, the guy is such a funny character but you, you you use him all the time like of all your vc guys he always shows up <laughs> he's awesome but what is he's just fun to draw <laughs> and that's what it comes with a lot of these guys like i need, I need to fill somebody oh devil header here we go <laughs> Wasn't right. Roughneck kind of like a just kind of like a make fun of Dave Johnson screws and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. Or... <laughs> that was his whole, whole reason for existing in the first place. <laughs> Dave Johnson's fascination for screws. It's hilarious. He like... used him in a in an issue of Wildcats. Did he? Nice. Yeah. There's one of those Alan Moore backup stories. He's in there. He's in the Clark's bar drinking a beer or something, and then he's surprised and all the screws fall out of his head. <laughs> It's pretty cool. He's such a random That's... character with his like patriotic pants. Like it, it makes absolutely no sense, but it <laughs> looks cool. It's such a mishmash of just randomness. I was like, is that a is that line permanent on you? Is that, what what's going on with that? I don't know. <laughs> it's funny how like some of your like the characters that stick are the ones that are kind of like seem like they were just kind of knockoff spoofs like the creator or she dragon you know roughneck like just little kind of funny like one-off things that for some reason or another like they come back and they you know they really they work for I don't yeah know. some reason some characters kind of take on a life of their own for whatever reason it's like oh i found this character's voice where some of the other characters you know, I like at this point with Dragon's kids, like I could I could write Amy Dragon all day long. Yeah, she does. She does seem to be the one we see the most of now. Right, but it's like okay, now you got to put some words into the mouth of mouth of uh, Jackson. It's like, okay. Jack seems to be the one we see the least of. Who? J- Jack. Jack. Yeah. Jack. Yeah. Like, all right. It whatever. seems like you're giving them all like their own trying well, he, at least. He went give them climbing up the wall and was doing being Spider Man, so he got to at least be a little bit of a hell hellraiser, but you gotta give him like the Ninja Turtle personalities, right? The super smart one, the fun yeah, one, you're, you're the dumb. leader. <laughs> <laughs> Taking it to Faco, was it hard to let Braun go? What an awesome bad guy. <laughs> I never saw it coming. When Faco stabbed him in the neck and he bit the dust, I was like, God damn. He went out like a champ. But I mean, <laughs> if he was my character, it'd be hard it's, to kill him some off. Some of these big, big like scenes is like, I know I was getting rid of a lot of like real BC list waste of space guys. But it's like, if I just get rid of b and c guys it it kind of takes away the the gravitas of the whole situation you know it's like oh so we lost a bunch of guys we don't give a shit about (laughs) who cares but and that and that's why i'm like i gotta take out some heavy hitters here yeah we lost we lost brawn we lost chaos control we lost um, insect insect there at the end and of course we lost Anne and we lost Dordis so it was a that was a good bloodbath this issue yeah it was a bloodbath crazy issue Ron was huge I mean though he he survived the dragon blood I mean that guy was in my book top notch uh-huh. one of the top 10 moments when the blood just comes yeah out we of his still eyes. talk about was... that <laughs> squeezing the blood out of his eyes I was like he's so badass <laughs> you me in, except for being bit in the neck and <laughs> a horn shoved in my throat like, uh, <laughs> i don't know i was quite gotta surprised what's that gotta be done <laughs> gotta do it <laughs> i definitely felt like it was a huge like for me at this time in the book like all right horde is like uh she died. I felt like maybe it was time. I was surprised by Anne, but I was super, super surprised by Insect because I felt like you were going somewhere with her relationship with Barry. And then it was like, wait, what, what the <laughs> hell? Well, it's a cliffhanger. We don't know how it ends. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, there's we don't even we don't even know what her power is. Maybe she can like regenerate organs. 
<laughs> you can always hope. He's got this other head growing out. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> you thought you'd done me in, but guess what? <laughs> Get away from me. But I love you. Oh, that's worse. <laughs> It's yeah. definitely, definitely been a lot of shocking deaths. Like the, the dart one totally was like, wait, she's dead? How? What? Huh? Like you expect her to go out in some huge superhero battle. She gets shot. Uh, then samurai yeah. insect, you know, what's going on? It'll, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, just uh, a lot of craziness with the, the vicious circle. And I feel like they've been in the book for a while, like back and kind of like just hovering around and they, they kind of attack and they pull back and then a bunch of guys die and then they regroup. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. They, it kind of felt like, all right, these guys have run their course. They've been around too goddamn long. It's been 30 years time to get different criminal organizations going something, you know, something over here. Let's do something over there. Let's try some different shit out. So I'm still trying to, figure out where I'm going with some of this shit, but I'm going to get there. <laughs> uh, and then all the, you know, meanwhile, is, 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 he, is he ever coming back to Chicago? Because I really like Chicago. So. <laughs> Forget it. He was, but not now. Yeah. I, I was thinking about it, but not anymore. You ruined it. <laughs> Did now you really get that? Like, it's weird that people have such an attachment to a setting. Like, well, people have attachments to all sorts of shit. It's like, <laughs> when's Dragon coming back? Oh, I like Malcolm <laughs> okay, but when's Dragon coming back? He is the guy. It's like, he could not have had a more definitive death. He blew up and he's in heaven. <laughs> it's like, what do you, what, what, can, I, what can I do? Well, here? you got to realize that he's really gone. I don't think people will believe it. I mean, you read Marvel comics in DC, anyone comes back. It, it might take a while, but they'll come back. So it's nonstop. It's never ending. And even if he did, even if he did come back, it'd be like, oh shit, now he's a sixty-year-old man. That's not as cool. I want him to be. Could he be young and vital and still doing all this crazy shit? It's like, no. It's set in real time. You don't understand. Everybody's getting older. That's the whole gig. They're all trudging towards death. <laughs> all right. <sighs> this daily reread has really driven that home. I I couldn't believe how little amount of time he spent as a cop over the course of 30 years. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's hardly <laughs> a cop at all. He's but but you have to understand, as when, I was, when I created this character as a little kid, he was never a cop. Right. So it was like he was like the guy who was in charge of the SOS, and even that he was not not that for very long. And then it was he was a guy raising a daughter on his own, and that's where I left him. He was he was family guy raising a daughter, and and that angel was his actual daughter too. That wasn't. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't some random dude's daughter. That was Dragon's actual daughter. And uh, same thing with uh, whoever those kids are. <laughs> Johnson <laughs> twins. The Johnson twins. Yeah, is it Mark and Peter? Is that yeah. it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Christ. Crusader and something. <laughs> well, and that's the thing too. It's like you know, people want the dragon back, but I'm super excited about Paul because it's kind of like you get to have your cake and eat it too. Like we get kind of a version of Dragon back, but we've got this new character that's pretty intriguing to me, and I'm like super stoked for two issues from now when we you know yeah, yeah, cover yeah. copy the origin the of Paul. Get all but, the uh, stuff. I don't know how which much is, of that. Which I'm just like <laughs> what I'm do trying I do? to sort it out in my head because. <laughs> I mean, in reality, all those stories took place in the 70s, but it's like, I can't have that. Otherwise, he's going to be, otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense that William Johnson would be around and exist in the 70s, given how old he is in this universe. 
And so a lot of those pieces, like, you know, looking at what, what went on in Megaton and going, oh, does this fit? It's like, God, I really can't have Reagan be president. There's just I, no I don't. I don't I'm think like, it has to make sense, personally. Just there's yeah. a time discrepancy between the timelines. I mean, that's all you really got to say. <laughs> there's a blip. Every... <laughs> Earth was frozen for 20 years, so it was the <laughs> 70s later than it what should is... have been. And then it got frozen again. It's like, fuck, or whatever. Everyone has bell bottoms on. <laughs> What's going on with all the bell bottoms? <laughs> well, we thought it was cool at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, uh, are you thinking like a lot of flashback type stuff in that issue? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll, it'll um, mostly and be. And that. that's going to be so It'll awesome. mostly be like flashback. And then it'll, and then. Towards the end, it's when it starts dovetailing into the stuff that we're familiar with, and it's like, all right, all right, I got it, I got it from here on out. You're part of the SOS or whatever. It's like, yeah, I read all the back issues. This happened. This happened. This happened. Okay, fine. Get, here's the part where it doesn't make any sense. Is it is it tough not having all those original comics to work off of, just going off of your memory? Um. Not really. No. Not really. I, I mean, I have. If I had them, I'd be like, "God, these things suck." <laughs> I forgot how much they suck. But it had actually had been a few years since I had even thumbed through them when my house burned down. So it had been because I wasn't prepping to do Savage Dragon at the time. I was right. just dude doing Spider Man. So. Um. You know, there was really no reason to be referring to any of those things. I wish I had. Um, but I did like a couple different hundred page issues back when I was a little kid. Be like, oh, this is awesome. I'll do a hundred page issue. Oh, he's fighting Superman. Oh, he's doing and I'd use you know, all sorts of unauthorized uh guest stars. And then I would do like here's this I, I initially was gonna gonna rotate it like there'll be a Joseph Strange issue and then there'll be a dragon issue and then there'll be a star issue and i got like three issues into that going yeah fuck this i don't like those other guys as much as dragon he's awesome they're they suck you made the right call <laughs> but it's like so much of it like i don't know it'll be odd to try and reconcile it because like star is a different dude um he he's he still happened to be called chris robinson but he was like a white guy. So well, my, my my personal opinion I, is the the differences is what makes it interesting to me. Yeah, it's an alternate I, reality. I like the fact that the the, uh, the the big the core of the characters is somewhat similar, but they are d crazy divergent. I, I just find yeah. that to be interesting. But that's me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So it, it won't be exactly the comics I did as a kid because it kind of can't be. Right. But I'll I'll come up with something that works. They'll be just drawn on like white line paper, like <laughs> yeah, that'd be <laughs> all drawn in fucking ballpoint pen. <laughs> Jim Rudd can make it work. There are because they were drawn on eight and a half by eleven folded in half, so the pages would be like drawn Super smaller small. than real life and then blown up for print. So they look extra shitty. Like, oh, this is cool. Look how bad they look. When when you used to make your comics, did you also put in like fake ads and make your own bullpen and stuff like that, or was it straight uh, comics? Not as much because I they were they were so crammed in terms of space. There would be like shitty letters pages, but I I was handwriting with, with a pencil, you know, like uh, it just it was really tough to read anyway. So doing any any of those kinds of things would be, were kind of messy. <laughs> I don't know. I wish I had them, but I I know I know in my heart that they were terrible. It's still cool though to look back yeah, at them. It's still cool. I'd publish them. I probably would be like, hey, here's, the, here's a whole pile of crap. People would be horrified by it all. I would I'm still not going to lie. It. I would buy it. <laughs> I would buy it. I actually, I <laughs> love uh, uh, Michelle Fife posted a bunch of his old comics and then put a, a whole thread with people posting their childhood 
comics. I found them interesting as hell, like just no holes barred, like anything goes, like just craziness. Even like my kids' comics, I look at them and I'm like, this is actually pretty awesome. It's it no, doesn't make sense, cool. but who cares? <laughs> They are they are awesome. I know um, Mike Waringa did a bunch of them when he was a kid, and I was I kept saying, "You got to publish these. This is this would be cool." And I kind of was hoping that that you know, like once he passed, it, his brother would be like, "All right, we're gonna publish this shit," <laughs> and uh, it'd be a fun project to just go like, "All right, we're we're gonna publish it, and then we'll get." You know, modern creators to all everybody draw, redraw a page that yeah. from his layouts, and we'll use the dialogue exactly. So it'll be here's the slick version, and then here's the crappy old version he did when he was a wee lad. That would be an awesome though. Even like a collected book of like, you know, pro artists and an issue, uh, you know, or whatever they had, uh, just kind of a collection of, you know, each pro artist and one issue of something they drew when they were like 10. <laughs> Alex Ross loves to share that shitty Superman he did when he was five <laughs> and like put it next to the, like the gouache painting that's all photorealistic. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. keep trying. Like it's meant to be inspirational. <laughs> Every time I see it though, I'm like, <laughs> I love shitty yeah. kid Alex Ross. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I want to see more comics from that dude. Yeah. He seems awesome. <laughs> Super bad, like. <laughs> I'm flying, but it's really difficult. <laughs> Have you, um, you know, speaking of other artists and comics and stuff like that, one of the, the, the series I've really gotten into recently is that Radiant Black and even like this kind of that massive verse with Rogue Sun and Dead Lucky. It's kind of fun that Image is getting like a superhero universe again and, and more creators are just doing superheroes. I know in, in Radiant Black there was some background like Dragon on the TV or something. Did, has there ever been any talk about maybe a possible crossover or any interest in that with those guys? I've given with with anybody, and I've let Eric Stevenson know. And I can't. If anybody wants to use my characters, and they're doing an image book, they just they can do it. Cool. You know, if it's an image book, and you want to have Dragon show up, you know, as long as there's proper whatever copyright bullshit. Yeah. I don't care. Go ahead, use them. You want Dragon to show up? All right. He's been dead for ten years, but here, use <laughs> Or I, or Malcolm, you know what? <laughs> Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> but uh, no, those books are super fun. Like, I'm just, I'm stoked that people, you know, Image isn't isn't getting away from superheroes entirely, and that there's still, you know, these creators bringing these types of books that yeah, seem I, to be I doing pretty well. More of it. I hope there's more because I I do like that that there's that sort of stuff. Um, I don't know if I started dragging that stuff into my book if people would be like, but. What? Where'd that come from? I don't know what that is. What the hell? Because there's, there's always that when that shows up and people are like, whoa, wait a minute. I don't need that book. <laughs> what are you even doing? But, no, it's cool. I like I like that it a sense that, oh, oh, it is the universe. And that if somebody's watching a cartoon in somebody other, other comics, like, oh, there's Guy and Deuter exists here too? That's cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a couple, I, you know, like Jeff Johns has that with the, the Junkyard Joe and the Geiger series, which I don't know if that's going to continue. It seems like Junkyard Joe is going to at least, but that's kind of cool. That just having multiple titles, like I, it's fun for the readers to to yeah. see that cohesiveness. and um, yeah. yeah, I'd like to do more. I'd like there to be more back and forth with with different things because that's that was one of the things i really loved about the early image comics is that everybody's always like just swapping shit and it didn't have to be even be a big thing but it's like hey if there's a newscaster why not have it be sam hayes or why not have it be the people from that spawn comic who never seem to get any older <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the Asian CNN gal. <laughs> well, it's, it, it, it is kind of weird that that you we have these like 
di weird divergent timeline. So it's like, oh, Malcolm could meet Superman now, and he'd be the same age as Superman. It's like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Angel was like this little girl in one of those, and now she's got she his cape. Like, you know, oh, I'm 28. <laughs> like, what? what the hell? Great Caesar's ghost. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Craig talks about like the uh, shared image universe, like uh, the superheroes mishmash kind of making a return because uh, people are actually old enough now that I saw a Twitter thread where thanks to the invincible cartoon, people are nostalgic for the fire breather animated movie. Oh yes, they are. And so oh. there's fire breather nostalgia, which feels like it came out yesterday. God damn it. So it's crazy yeah. to me that there's people like, I watched that when I was a teen. I love that. And I'm like, wasn't that like two years ago? Like what the hell? I felt like I thought Fire Breather was gonna blow up after that, and it was like, eh, it got a little yeah. like nothing. It has fans. It's like, really? The, uh, the unfortunate like, thing that's is such a good book. Uh, there was yeah. a series that came out when the sh when the movie came out, and it did never completed. It's an incomplete series, uh, which is really uh, disappointing. But uh, such a cool concept and uh, just great art. It was you know Andy hey, is a great artist. Teen superhero uh -huh. book. You'd you'd think it'd have yeah, an audience. Uh -huh. Where is it? What's going on? Well, he showed up in Dragon <laughs> too. That was cool and invincible. Yeah. So there's a uh, synergy, you know. That's what I'm talking about. That shared universe. It it happened in the early image boom, like when it started. Everybody was you and Rob and Todd, you know, mishmash. And then we got a little sweet taste of it back with the Kirkman Kirkmania, you know, Fire Breather, Invincible Dragon, all crossing over. And then of course that it went away. And I guess we're getting a little taste of it with Radiant Black and them, the massive verse again. Was uh, there was there ever any talk with you, Eric, about maybe a Dragon appearing in the Invincible cartoon? I know, like they cut yeah. some things out. And yeah, 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 they may, may, he may show up. He may show up. Oh wow! Ooh. I don't know that he's going to be like just like a background a kind of part of it, but you know, like if if the world's going crazy and all this shit's falling apart and dragon was there initially it's like let him show up that will be awesome I, I think that would be great i think that could you know pique some interest <laughs> for people that maybe don't know about him because people go crazy over that show i use the world tour uh invincible dragon cover to push that shit i was like hey guys <laughs> Look at this. And people are like, wow, Invincible. Dragon met Invincible? I'm like, he sure damn did. Why don't you read this issue? I, I post that friend? cover to the Invincible, the Invincible War, like super fold-out cover. People go, huh? Invincible met Youngblood? Huh? Like, yes, people dude. are kind of clue clueless about Image Comics. Yeah. Well, it, 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 you got to realize that there's just this whole wave of Netflix or uh, Amazon Prime viewers that never picked up a comic and yeah. watched oh, the boys yeah. and everything That's else. True too. With with all the Marvel superhero stuff, it's like most of those guys don't. Oh, they still publish those? I didn't even know they exist. Where do you get them? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the new stand's been dead forever. That's where I think Dragon would work best, like a, a animated series like that Invincible. So I think it would be perfect for for a Dragon series. Like I would be most excited for that. But they 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 pretty they did pretty well with Invincible. Like they kept it pretty close to the book. Well, obviously, some changes had to be made, but I was I was pretty happy with the way that turned out. And I'm pretty excited if 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 it all comes through. And like you say, maybe if Dragon shows up, that would be pretty exciting for us fans. <laughs> to see that even if it's just a little background thing or you know small <laughs> but, yeah <laughs> i was like I was, somebody sent me i was like oh what i was like dude yeah, i was like i gotta i gotta, I gotta <laughs> sell you yeah, know? Nice. <laughs> nice. so it'll be a new sale for us to collect yeah, yeah I, I got a couple back here somewhere <laughs> except for you'll be bidding against rabid invincible fans <laughs> I can take them. <laughs> <laughs> but that's exciting news. Wow. I didn't yeah. didn't realize that. Are you thinking in this next uh, season maybe? Or has this been talks about like – I don't know. Out? He asked me at some point. I said, sure, go ahead. Use them. I don't I don't know when that would be or what or if, if I need to – If, yes. Yeah. Or if I need to sign off on it or 
It's possible. That's what's important. I don't know. I mean, I told somebody they could use Super Patriot and he just showed up. So who the hell knows? <laughs> uh, <laughs> when it comes down to a lot of this stuff, I'm just like, just, I don't give a shit. Just do whatever the hell you want to do. I'm, I'm going to continue to do my comic. You know, uh, can he show up? Sure. Do do I? Do you need any money? No. <laughs> uh, I feel like with Kirkman, just, he's just as long as you guys aren't aren't tying up the rights to my character by having him appear in, the, in a cameo. I don't. I don't care. Whatever. I think especially with Kirkman, since he's such a fan, he knows the character. Like that's a no brainer. Like if if oh, you can yeah. get some publicity out of that, that would be. I don't know. It it would just be fun to see him interact with Invincible on TV. Yeah. Neat uh, stuff. Cool. We'll uh, we'll go lobby now <laughs> on Twitter <laughs> since you're not on Twitter. We'll go. Yeah, I'm not there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Let's talk about that for two seconds because I think it's fun and it's funny and it's interesting. Um, do you feel like you have more? Uh, Colleen Duran talks uh, a distant soil, dear listeners. Google it. But uh, Colleen Duran, <laughs> everyone knows. But like, yeah. uh, she is super mindful of her social media and how it consumes her life, so that she can be more productive. She uses a lot of timer apps or whatever else. Do you feel a little liberated not having to deal with Twitter all the time? It seemed well, like you had it, to deal with a lot of bullshit. Nice, but but I had, I had pulled back a lot anyway because I took it off my phone when they had announced that he was taking over. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a, a, a while ago. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it so it wasn't there and in my face all the goddamn time. And then, you know, so when this new thing came about and it was like, oh, and, and people are like, hey, you said you'd leave. It's like, oh, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> you, you thought I hadn't left? You're, you're responding to some fucking book author. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> So no real difference. You'd already checked out. So it just doesn't work. Really you know, I, I was coming in there and weighing in on a little bit of stuff, mostly, you know, here's the comics I was buying and the spinner rack, but it, but once they, once the spinner rack had, had been around for a year anyway, it's like, you've covered every one of these days a year ago. So it's, you know, I kind of felt like I'd let everybody know what, what I'd been reading when I was, well so we got, we got that all covered was it weird to you uh finding yourself cited in like news sites and political articles and stuff was that a weird thing to just hey, uh, eric i saw you in the washington post I, 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 I haven't really chased down a lot of those stories somebody did send me an email asking and which is which is why i guess it ended up being in there um she's like hey did you leave it's like yeah gave him a couple of quotes and then he was like oh awesome <laughs> yeah okay cool you got a story to tell me. <laughs> was that one of them was like uh, eric larson creator of spider-man <laughs> yeah right <laughs> hey this is what he, he's best known for spider-man it's like fuck i'm just <laughs> like doing it myself <laughs> <laughs> But I read that I was like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> uh, no, it is what it is. No. What? You're not watching Peacock? Savage Dragon's right there, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I've seen your show and it is terrible. Jeez. <laughs> oh, oh, oops. <laughs> I want to. Um, I don't know if if you guys uh, you want to go in this direction. But I want to talk about Ant. We haven't really talked too much about yeah, Ant. We, we didn't was released. We didn't get a lot of Savage Dragon this year, but we certainly got Ant. You got some Ant. Yeah. Yeah. Which has been kind of a a bumpy ride, but <laughs> all right. How are you feeling year, about it's just it? Just like I just want to. I just want to collate all this stuff. This happened and this happened and this. It's like God damn it. <laughs> you still feeling like you're sort of going through those paces like still trying to sort things out uh not that much anymore she i i know i don't think i'll be doing any more 
homages to uh, oh, yeah. stuff mm -hmm. at this point. I mean, some, some, it, it's getting the the series had progressed to the point where it was getting the issues that I can't really deal with the characters anyway. Mostly, what I want to be able to do is is write it so that the earlier issue twelve works as this series is issue twelve. I told that's you guys that was the idea. I told you <laughs> they didn't believe me. That's the believe only. It. That's the only thing that I really like. Oh, I want to do this. But beyond that, um, you know, I, I just got to build her up a little bit of a rogues gallery and have her deal with this cold burn dude again and whatever. Well, it's been a lot. It's been a lot of. I've enjoyed it. I, I found it a lot of fun uh, going through all these because I've never read the original series, so getting it in this context is all new to me. Same. Yeah. Yeah, my concern was that it, it's it's pretty jumpy in the first few issues, and then suddenly it gets to the dragon or the the Malcolm spawn ant stuff, and then it's like, okay, <laughs> now it's just now we're just going on this ride. Here we go. So it, it won't be as as jerky afterward, but. She is kind of going on this quest to find stuff that we, the reader, are like, yeah, we know, we know what the answer is. You know, this is not a big revelation to us. We've read the previous issues. She, she'll be fine. But I don't know. I'm, I'm having fun with it. It kind of gets that that get my Spider-Man on kind of stuff because I can do all my Spider-Man poses and do like that. So. Like, oh, cool. I get to have a Spider-Man book again. This is fun. So, no, yeah. that, That's very understandable. I mean, it, it is fun in that way, in that Spider-Man way. Um, so, uh, we're, we're all really, we're all really curious what, how, uh, how the, how the end of uh, that, cr that crossover from her perspective is going to be different than what we saw from Malcolm's perspective. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, Craig. <laughs> I mean, there, there, there's the part where where Spawn and and Dragon kind of wander off to go yell at each other. She, where she's just gonna be like, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> we'll see it from her point of view. Like, she's just going and stealing a van. <laughs> but uh, other than that, it's like the fight that they have is the fight that they have. Um, and the voice over would be like, God, this guy's such a tight ass. <laughs> oh, does he know this guy's causing all kinds of problems and needs to be taken out? But... We enjoyed on the last issue, you sort of got to doctor some of that dialogue. Some of that McFarlane tinkered with dialogue came off a lot more natural through that Eric Larson voice. Yeah, that vein felt, <laughs> felt like it rang a lot more true. A thing that made us laugh is this sort of like he kind of wrote Spawn like a dick, and you kind of and you kind of didn't. <laughs> you kind of churched it up a little. Spawn was a little bit more of a team player. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, from her point of view, <laughs> he's just whatever she says. Yeah, I kind of went back to my original script, but then there was stuff that there there were a lot of the original script had spawn voiceover stuff. And it's like, well, this is this is all gotta go, so that I can't use that. And then you know, this this pa page doesn't really work as the splash, so I need to redo that. I need to redo that, eh, but uh. <laughs> seem very <laughs> exasperated still. Yeah. Well, well, soon, soon the pain will be over, and I won't have to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next thing. And so, is is the are the ant books kind of going smoothly, or is it? Um, I'm. There's going to be a break after six, just because I'm just farther behind on dragon than I would like to be, and I'm so I want to get some more dragon done. That's going to be super confusing when you get six and it says the end and then there's a break. Yeah, no, it, doesn't, it doesn't come out for a few months. Oh, God, oops. Uh, 
Maybe you can put a little like a put disclaimer. Not, put, the put, end. Put, 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 hey, put, 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 put not the end at, as the, uh, <laughs> the next issue catch. Well, they'll they'll be a little they'll be a little still a uh, you know a next Colburn or whatever whatever the hell. I'll, I'll leave there be something in there so you'd be like oh this continues cool. So oh well. Well, we're looking forward to it for certain. What what have you found the reaction to be to Ant? Like, because it's much different than Savage Dragon. And are you getting, do you feel like you're getting other fans outside of Savage Dragon that maybe collected the old Ant series or other fans? Not just, a like, lot of, not a lot of old Ant people showing up. In fact, there's not a lot of mail uh, for some of those. So I'm not sure how I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to deal with that once once we get to a couple of those issues. I might have to do a like an issue of dragons. Like, the blank hey, page. <laughs> on the blank page. Here's what happens if you don't write in, fuckos. That was a gut punch. Yeah, that hurt. <laughs> well, that's, so that's, what do you do, you know, at that point? Are uh, you interested in, you've gone sketchbook heavy and letter heavy. Are we going to start seeing ant backups or pinups? from like guests uh i don't know yet there are there have been people who have been asking if they could do something in the back of the book uh and that that may happen that's a, that's a po distinct possibility sure hell yeah uh, but it, it does feel kind of weird you know in a way because it's because it up to this point it's like it's all my <laughs> It's all my crap, including my coloring, to suddenly be like, oh, and here's a backup by some random dude. Like, oh, that's, that seems strange. No yeah. rules in comics, though. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Rules. I can do whatever the hell. <laughs> You're the emperor. It's your show. Well, the, the people are, do ask all the time, like, oh, can I do a pinup in your book? And can I do a backup story or whatever? So, all right. You know, as long as it's not terrible. Uh, <laughs> sure, whatever. Um, I, do, I do solemnly swear not to not to uh, ask to put something of mine in the comments. <laughs> but the, the thing with Ant is it is, uh, it is supposedly for somewhat younger readers. I think it's a teen plus book. So, you know, fewer, fewer vaginas showing up. <laughs> So with the backups, like, okay, you can't be saying fuck shit, fuck shit, everything. Right, yeah. <laughs> Same, the dragon rules don't apply here. You have to... Yeah. When I saw her in the skin-tight red dress, I was like, <gasps> I was like, fellas, does this seem all ages? Is Hannah, is Hannah <laughs> too sexy here? Teen te te plus, teen plus. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's teen plus. It's like, come on, something for the kids. <laughs> Quote, unquote, the yeah. uh, kids. I mean, I was pretty much a teenager <laughs> watching... Uh, well, reading Savage Dragon, some of those scenes are pretty racy. You're a kid. I, I made out all right. I, I did okay. <laughs> I think. You might have corrupted me a little, Eric, but. He's more perverse than he cares to admit. All right. <sighs> are you glad to see this year on its way out? You're feeling good, yeah. Leaving this one behind. Seems like it's been a bear, man. This is, seems like one of your publisher years. Yeah, it does kind of feel like that. You know, I'm I'm glad that this ultimate thing is is behind me. I'm hoping that the the subsequent volumes are not nearly the pain in the ass that this one was. It, they shouldn't be because there shouldn't be all the the recoloring and the other tampering that needs to go on. Because there's got to be a point, even when we're doing this reread, there's got to be a point where it just like it's like okay, he definitely has the digital files for these. After that, it's smooth sailing. But yeah, issue seventy five. Yeah, I would hope. I mean, there's it's just image keeps moving around so goddamn much, and and things get sent off to other countries, and somehow or other files get lost but i i think it's solid from here on out at least i hope it's solid from here on out <laughs> God, <laughs> <damn it. laughs> uh, 
have a, we'll see, you know, like missing a cover here and missing that. But I, it's like I don't have all the original art, but, you know, Robert Kirkman's got most of the stuff that I don't have, so. Don Simpson was doing an art collection and had to get a piece from Craig. That's right. He was like, Craig, uh, that's a real good piece. Uh, can you well, send it to me? Apparently, he didn't get rid of a lot of his stuff, and I got a piece off eBay at a decent price. It wasn't the greatest one, but he needed it, so he was nice. He, he gave me a sketch when he returned. I mailed it to him. He returned it with a, a sketch. It was pretty cool. Oh, nice. He's a nice dude. Hey, uh, speaking of Don Simpson, um, is there – any thought of putting that Megaton Man crossover in the Ultimate Collection just because of the She Dragon appearances? And there's know. there's a few pages that ended up uh, finding their way into the whatever the first Dragon trade. And I just emulate that, but I don't I don't do all the full the crossover. Full I don't have. There's no Don Simpson art except for the cover is in the cover gallery in the back. Oh, cool. I love his stuff. I mean, I I, I liked it, but I gained a brand new appreciation from his stuff over uh, the pandemic. Is that the dinner bell? <laughs> it's dinner bell to me. <laughs> I don't know. Did we cover everything? If there's, if there's yeah, we we I think we've we've yeah. hit every one of our topics that we intended to. So we, this okay. is yeah, absolutely. Is, if there's more. I can I can you know, I can always go down a little late, but <laughs> no, I mean I I think we just always appreciate your time and we do you know, yeah for sure. Uh, you, you think hopefully maybe we'll get some more Savage Dragon issues in the new year and oh, things yeah, will yeah. normalize That's a little bit. Plan. That's the plan. I I need it. There's a couple little hurdles I need to get over, but then I want to, I, I want to, I got a different place I want to go with stuff. So oh, awesome. We, we are, awesome. Ro we are That's rooting cool. for you. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, Toronto isn't forever. I'm just going to leave it. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Big scoop there. Scoop. <laughs> so, uh, so, awesome. so eventually we'll, we'll, we'll be doing something else. So. So, I just want to throw it out real quick, Craig. Uh, we've been doing the daily uh, Savage Dragon reread for the 30th anniversary. Every day we read an issue. And God damn, Eric, dude, be proud. I mean, I don't know. I see you kind of seem like you don't give a fuck to about, too much about anything. You're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but like, just, just take a moment to drink it in. I mean, <laughs> That is like thousands of goddamn pages of quality uh, reading. I keep it, waiting. It does, to sh it does add up. I'm it's shocking. <laughs> and what's crazy is it's shockingly good and shockingly cohesive. I mean, I know that you say you just make shit up all the time. It just doesn't feel like it. it, so, it there's there's definitely stuff that it was like, all right, I had something definitely in mind, and I know where I'm going with this, and then I'm going to pay it off. And then there's other stuff where I second guess myself. There's two reveals that kind of suck because I second guess myself and go, oh, I'll do this instead. And it was like, God damn it. That was a bad <laughs> idea. And one was, one was mutation. It was always supposed to just be uh, Gertie. It was this pulling in a second person as part of it was sort of a last minute, stupid thing to do. It, it was supposed to just be Gertie going, fuck, now's my, now's my opportunity to be with Dragon. This will be great. Um, because she was just like her, her, her ugly friend. Right. Right. So, so, and then the other was, uh, the, the overlord reveal was kind of a bullshit thing too, because it, oh. it was, it was supposed to be powerhouse. Oh, oh, I mean, what it kind of make, kind of makes sense based on, you know, his uh, point of view as a character, but I think Flash yeah, well, it's was like a, when, blood. when I, when I thought about it afterwards, like, wait a minute, he killed a dude. I don't know that Flash Mercury would kill a dude. That seems a little out of character for him. Yeah. Whereas Powerhouse was like kind of team bad there for, for you know, he'd be whenever there'd be vicious circle shots, it's like, I'm here too, guys. So, so yeah. I, I, I may at some point go, uh, acknowledge that they, they were like, switching off and on in the costume just like sometimes it was me and sometimes it was you i may just drop that in some dialogue at some point wow but uh Ooh. because it, it it was supposed to be 
it was supposed to be him. And then I was like, hey, wait a minute. It could work. It's Flash Mercury. <laughs> yeah, except it doesn't, you idiot. <laughs> oh, man. It felt like it worked. Yeah. Now I got to go back and reread this. <laughs> but I just did, and it felt just like ruined it. it. Well, there, like there a, like a scene where, where, I, where it's like, we see Powerhouse and you see Overlord in the same scene. So it's like, well, it's clearly not Powerhouse, but that but doesn't that mean you're not a, switching it's off. supposed to be like a. I mean, a I, red, I, I do recall Flash Mercury showing glee when the creator was killed. <laughs> <laughs> and that killer instinct. Oh, well. well. You you'd be, I'm just saying you you just be amazed. Like I mean I don't know maybe you don't maybe you don't maybe. Well you the thing like the that. thing that always gets me when I do a reread would be God damn it I use that phrase a lot, <laughs> you know, or, or it just it just keeps coming back again and again. It's like oh fuck do I really have nothing else than then then. I don't know, whatever it is, let's do it or whatever. There's, there, there's, there's an off, you know, or there, there's, there'd be some phrase that I use in my own life. There's a whole mess of something, you know, and it's like, yeah. that's not something that is in everybody's, everybody doesn't say that, you know, it's sort of like those weird scenes where you, where, you, where, where some random person is calling Spider-Man web slinger and you go, wait a minute, do we, is that is that a common thing for everybody to know this thing? That seems a little odd. That you all are in on this weird nickname. I definitely have picked up Eric Larson phrases just from reading 250 issues of this book. I can't name off the top of my head, but I know certain things I say, and I'm like, you've that's called, from Eric. <laughs> you've called Jim a milk sop many times. I, I <laughs> often many times. I often use dunderhead in casual conversation. <laughs> All right, my job is done. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go grab some dinner, guys. Thanks. All right, well, thank and you so much. Thank really, you so much. Anytime you want to have me on the, on this thing, I am I am super happy to be part of it. Awesome, so, thank you. You guys Appreciate are doing a great job, and you know you you made an awesome comic for me too. So <laughs> thank That's you. Good. Take care. All right, guys. Talk good to chatting later. with you. Wow, what a fantastic interview. Uh, always a pleasure and an honor to speak with Mr. Eric Larson himself. You, Jim, you, Craig, I just want to be a little sentimental in our 30th year of Savage Dragon and our 10th year of the Savage Finn cast. Let me just say it has been a pleasure and an honor to get to do these reviews with you fellows. As I do the reread daily, I have started to hit issues where we covered them before together and oh baby the memories it's just been fun it's been a lot of fun a crazy journey i can't believe the places this little show has gone was was it in november when we started the fincast i think it was Let me so this is basically check the facts on that <laughs> it says here episode zero went up november 2011 there you go November 13th. 10 years. We're old bastards. Or old ass fucking broken microphones. That episode <laughs> is atrociously bad. Can you believe that this show is now older than some people's kids? It is now older than Connor Tierney. <laughs> is it? <laughs> He's only nine, dude. He's only nine. Connor, you're so talented, young man. I kid. We love you. Yeah, it's been um, fun, though, guys. How about those scoops that Eric just dropped on us at the end of the interview? Like, wait, wait, wait what? Just pulled him out of nowhere. Pulled him out of his hat. I, I could talk about that powerhouse revelation for hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's shocking. Well, not shocking. I mean, that, that, that's kind of, kind of what I would, would want to talk about is that I think we all, a lot of people predicted it was powerhouse uh, early on. It would, the swerve to Flash Mercury was um, surprising. Not to me. I, I don't remember that. Do you remember that, Craig? I think so. Yeah, it's been a while, but I think like I felt like it had to be powerhouse or something. And I, I think like you said that like he made that change just because too many people I feel like maybe were onto it. Damn. I don't remember that at all. Flash Mercury makes so much more sense. He's a human dude. Well, 
So it's powerhouse. It's the same thing. Powerhouse and him are the same, almost like they both wear masks power. that turn them into superheroes. Do you, what would happen if you gave if they gave each other each other's masks? Do you think that is would the it, secret, secret the secret lore that needs to be written? <laughs> Superhero docking. What if they you wear? Think a, that's why they're friends. <laughs> They want to be mass friends. Do they? They swap off with. Uh... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I like the. I like having video. You could see the little twinkle in Jim's eye when he said that the little evil twinkle. It was more sinister for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was great. I mean, also, I mean, the big one is, he, he, all of a sudden, he was just like, "Yeah, they're probably not going to be in Toronto much longer." Like what? Yeah. yeah. What do you guys think about that? You think they're going to New York, or you think they're going to D.C. where Angel is? Isn't she in D.C.? New York? What? Where'd that come from? I don't know. Oh, I mean, okay. You just threw it out there. Okay. No, yeah. I'm just saying, like, okay. or are they just going to go back to Chicago? I don't think they'll uh, go back to Chicago. Chicago's been freaked out. I feel so like technically, it, it, no it's got to be a big city, right? Because you got to have a lot of different villains and crazy scenes and stuff, right? So <laughs> Wouldn't it be crazy if it was rural? Maybe they'll go to yeah. space. <laughs> space. You know what's funny? Rural would be a new direction for Savage Dragon. I don't think we've seen the country in that book at all. Space we've seen. No, we have Horridus. That oh, scene, right? You're right. The grass is all tall. I think there's yeah, even a wagon wheel, if I remember. Larson trees. Yeah. Wow, Horridus the Hayseed died of COVID. Makes sense. I... Don't know, Greg. DC makes sense. To follow Angel makes sense. Right? I feel like it does. Otherwise, she's got to keep coming up to visit every once in a while to stay relevant to the book. And you got to think she's going to poop out a kid as soon as she hooks up with Frank. <laughs> so, I mean, it's real time, dude. Everybody's always having kids in Savage Dragon. Always. Yeah. Everybody has a kid. Rex Dexter didn't have a penis and had a kid somehow. <laughs> I'm saying science, science, he scienced one up, but, uh, yeah, I feel like the book going wherever angel takes them makes sense. Although fuck it, it could be some alternate reality shit, dude. Paul could like, you know, end their multiverse or something. Who knows? I just didn't see that coming because of, um, uh, North Force and stuff. I felt like that was getting built up, and yes. now it's like, all right, peace out. And the vi- the vicious circles up there, like they moved to Canada. Well, yeah. the vicious the vicious circle situation seems to be uh, possibly Fizzling coming in. to a head. Um, yeah, but still, they're, they're all gonna get they're all gonna get eight. I'm just saying, can you imagine that your rogues gallery moved to where you were, and you just move away? <laughs> God damn, Maxine, let's get out of here. Well, maybe it's. The rogues gallery disappears before he moves away. Never know. It's wild. That was a big. That was that a was a big bomb point. to just drop at the end. Like what? Huh? What? Yeah. All casual. Uh, he also dropped the bomb that uh, Dragon might show up in Invincible. Oh yeah, right. The cartoon. <laughs> right. Just that like, would yeah. be fantastic. I, I wouldn't get too excited about that. Yeah. I mean, he it's probably going to be very. It's, if it's if happens, it's going to be minor. And uh, where it happens is a question. There's no definite if it's season two, three, four. Probably well, whenever whenever uh, Invincible War gets some kind of adaptation. My guess is season three. Also imagine that he would have gotten something to sign off on if it was going to happen. And if he hasn't, yeah. then. Yeah. It's more he told Kirkman, do it if you want. If it he happens, it keep me in the like, loop. Yeah. He made it seem like it was happening, though. But then the more we talked about it, it was like, oh, maybe not. Well, you never know if he can't if he can't talk. About oh, yeah, he probably absolutely can't give any details. He, Could he, be like an NDA or something. Yeah, that's true. Well, honestly, be, honestly, I'm shocked he told us as much as he did. Yeah, yeah. it would be fucking fantastic if he showed up next season, dude. If he showed up and he just looked right in the camera. And it, was, and it zooms in on his face, and it's like Jim Cummings' voice. And he's sure. like, <laughs> <laughs> "Let's trip the light, fantastic! <laughs> it's you and me, trip the light, fantastic, punk!" <laughs> <laughs> and Mark Grace, it just cuts to Mark Grace. He's like, "Okay, <laughs> let's." 
<laughs> Relax, buddy. <laughs> whoa, officer. Whoa. <laughs> Let's not trip the white fantastic, if we will. <laughs> It'd be awesome if it was like him, Alex, and Gilroy. Yes, dude. Animated Alex. Fuck yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, crazy pint bomb. That was a crazy interview. Crazy ass interview. Ant, he's almost done with the collecting of sort of previous events and he's ready to sort of move. That's the Craig direction fulfilled. Yes, please. Let's just move on. Yeah. I mean, but dude, listen, I can't wait to see what the fuck he does. He said the magic word, build up the rogues gallery. Did have been waiting for some new Eric goons. Like that's the thing with the Malcolm era is there's like been no definitive goons. It's yeah. like, I can't wait to see him whip out some uh, villains for Ant. Same. Well, I think there's a lot to look forward to in the new year. We kind of had a bummer of a year in terms of, you know, uh, Eric Larson releases, but obviously he's been working behind the scenes on, you know, stuff and seems like he's getting his stuff back together. So I'm looking forward to the next year. I didn't want to bring it up in the interview, but as someone who is having to go through old shit right now myself, God damn, it's a nightmare. It's just such a slog. It just oh. slows you down. And yeah, it's no one. It kills what what are you life. doing it for? Print collections. Oh, I see. Got it. Yeah. And With what's those... funny is I'm, I'm not even going back like 30 years. I'm saying the nightmare. Listen. Yeah. All my Raven. stuff's on hard drives, so... Greedy and fills are something we all go through. <laughs> Lens flares and dodge tools, you know, you gotta, you gotta play Lens around. <laughs> Replace this star field, you know. Maybe I move this polygon off this twitch chin, you know. That's did, been bugging did, me for years. Did, did you see Did you see my webcomic I posted as your counterexample? You saw it? Okay. I just did. just remember where, where the rest of us are. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying it. Sometimes you go back and you just you're filled with nothing but regret, and you're just like <laughs> you're just like how how do I like at what point do I walk away? Like what do I do I really walk away? Do I really leave this like this? Yeah, like you got to preserve that stuff in amber. I I don't know, man. Some of the in the reread. What's so funny is in the reread that I'm doing right now. Sometimes I see stuff. And I'm just like, oh, god damn, if he had the ability to fix that, I know he would. Like, something just be oh, you, oh, you, I'm sorry. I've been actually a little con, uh, mixed up. I thought you were talking about, like, the the side stuff. Like, ex- not the actual comics themselves, but rather the, uh, like, the banners and, the, like, the portrait stuff like you did for your websites and that sort of thing. Oh, no. I mean, in terms of everything, going back, just going back is hard. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I can just, see that. Going back is hard. When you look at your old shit, you're just like, God damn. And this isn't is this isn't your oldest shit, right? This is when you actually, because you had done the comic previously and then you came back to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm not going all the way back. I'm not going 25 years back. I just refuse. <laughs> We're so, no, I'm not going back as far as he's going back. But I'm just saying, even just to go back like to 2008, I'm just like, oh, God damn. I want to redo everything. <laughs> I want to, I want to shape this up. I want to make this look, I'm, I'm a better artist now. It's just tough. It's tough to not George Lucas, the fuck out of it. Cause you want to, <laughs> I, I have seen, uh, I'll tell you this much for a dollar. I have seen collections where the artist does go back and tries to touch it up with recoloring or touch it up with, with, inking or other things and it always is obvious it always Brian is Boland, the killing joke yeah that that's fucking... a, that's a, that's a good example of the Famous. color just absolutely ruins that original intent uh because it's a product of the 80s and you tried to make it look like the product of the 2000s and it does not work yeah you can't you can't go back what's funny is even when eric was sharing on social media the comparisons of the original dragon miniseries and then the recolored for and then you know putting them all three side by side right people people were like i like the old stuff better the garish like really like bright people were like i like the old stuff better and i'm just like mm. you're not gonna he's not gonna do it because it doesn't match 
current Savage Dragon like fucking at all. No, not at all. And as you said, there's just so many weird anomalies that were not even intended. Yeah. I mean, so to to make the George Lucas comparison, Eric is removing like the ghosting behind the green screen stuff. Right. He's not putting in the fucking CGI uh, Wampa. <laughs> fair, fair. I don't know. It was a crazy ass show, guys. It was a crazy ass show. Yeah. Shall we wrap it up? Let's wrap it up. Tell them where they can email us. If you have any questions, comments, you want to add anything, you want to praise us for our smooth talking. And uh, I don't know. I guess, are we going to post video on this episode or no? No, I didn't record it. So, okay. No. So they can't, uh, they can't see our fate, our, our, our faces <laughs> are good looks that's good because um, doing. <laughs> anyway uh yeah write in uh let us know what you think of the show let us know what you want to hear more of and uh if you have anything else to say just uh email us at savagefincast at gmail.com thank you fellas thanks for listening thank you.